what is a movie trope or a movie cliche, a movie theme that you wish nobody would ever use in a movie ever again? There are so many, actually. Oh god, there's so many. Honestly, so many romantic comedies are like that. A lot of it. <laughs> a lot of it. I can remember the series Gossip Girl sending some really fucked up messages about what healthy relationships <laughs> should look like. I mean, growing up, I loved uh, Disney movies, something that I realize now where, where that was maybe not good for kids to watch is that, you know, a woman doesn't need a man to save her. Uh, you know, she can definitely do it on her own. So yeah, that, that a woman needs to be saved. Hello, women, if you're stuck in a forest, go pick up yourself. I want those movies to come out. I think we are there. Elsa is doing that. Um, there are a lot more movies coming up where we don't need uh, the Superman to come and save you. I want the next generation, the teenagers, to see those characters because film, of course, is a huge influence. I don't want to see a girl, help me, help me, help me. No. <laughs> like, you know, it's fine to seek for help, but it's not fine for me for that character to sit down and wait for the person to come. And that is mostly the man. I mean, I don't like that. Yeah, I mean, one is the Manny Pixie Dream Girl. So this, um, this cute girl who just appears and kind of saves um, the male protagonist. So he has some problems, he doesn't know. And she's just there being perky. Yeah, being like a fantasy. And then somehow his life gets better because she's there. But you never really get the impression that you know her or that she has any interests um, at all. I don't know if they should never use it ever again, but I think the picture or the image of the uh, of young teenage boys who are only interested in fucking and porn and women is so oversimplified. And while there is no uh, analogy for, for women, for young girls, it's uh, really not that great a uh, yeah, picture. What I really hate, in, especially it's this um, female and male presenters, especially on MTV and stuff, you've got the, the very bubbly, very sexually, um, over-sexually female presenter, and you've got the, the idiot male presenter who makes fart jokes, and I think those are awful gender stereotypes. Also, I think that there are a lot of toxic uh, relationships in movies, like a man, how he, you know, he, you know, treats the woman poorly, uh, yet she, but she just loves him and she does everything she can to, to win him over, you know, or he's not interested in her, so she'll go do all of these crazy antics to kind of get him to fall in love with her. You know, this is ridiculous. You, you, you are the packet, you know, the full package. And I think you can find the person who will appreciate you for you and you don't need to trick anybody to, into loving you. To work with the five acts that every movie has to kind of follow, often, like often these people get back together even though there were some legit reasons to for example break up or not pursue the relationship but for the sake of the happy end they still get back together that often bugs me there's still the problem isn't resolved you still just put a nice bow on it i mean i guess greece is also kind of an interesting one because i mean greece we used to watch that all the time in sleepovers as a kid when i was a kid and sandy changes herself so that Danny likes her. Like she starts smoking and like becomes a bad girl because that's what he wants. Like, I mean, it's a great movie, but this, this is kind of dangerous territory, I feel. And also there was this theme in the 90s where it was just like, yeah, like an ugly duckling and then the guy comes, the popular guy comes and likes the uncool girl. And, and then she's cool because the cool guy decided that she was cool. After she has the makeover. After she has the makeover, right, when she takes the glasses off and pulls out her ponytail and goes like this, then she's finally worthy. Exactly, and th this white horse thing. Like, you know, you there will be this guy and the prince is waiting and the white horse is coming. Can we teach girls to go ride that white horse by themselves? That they take lessons and then just go. And they can take the man on ride, like it's fine for him to keep waiting. Then also the cool girl, you know, the girl drinks beer and eats a lot of meat and she's one of the boys. It's also kind of a fantasy because um, most of those cool girls in real life, they're just, um, you know, trying really hard. Um, 
you had to to also play a certain role actually i think maybe that one dimensional slut character that is portrayed there a young woman who wants to have sex maybe earlier or maybe with more than just one person more than just her boyfriend um that she's immediately called a slut or also treated by the other girls in a really bad way and they're talking about her and yeah judging her for it and that annoys me <laughs> a lot i don't want to mention it taylor swift but i will she uh, has a song on her latest album called the man where she's basically talking about if i have lots of boyfriends as a woman i'm i'm a slut if you have lots of girlfriends as a man you're basically just browsing as i get older i think hmm, you know i don't need to hear a man sing about how he finds a woman beautiful anymore like i feel like this kind of narrative needs not die but kind of go away or women singing about how she feels beautiful be in his eyes in her partner's eyes i think this also needs to to slowly die i think it would be nicer if now and i think it is happening women sing more about how great they are and how Comf how how confident they are in themselves and and sort of and and also you know I have to say I like a good love song but it's nice if a woman sings other things besides love songs because <laughs> we're more than just our partners um, yeah I'm a I love my husband but I am a complete and whole person um, also without him even though I love him so much and then I mean there are all those women and films and movies who are just there to i don't know be the sex object or something so they're never really talking that much they're just there um so the male protagonist can have something nice to look at so um they you don't know anything about them what they like um Uh, what they're doing so often there's no mention of their jobs um american pie i mean it's full of uh i don't know how many don'ts <laughs> and you just you're just watching it because you're curious as a young person and you want to watch something about sex and dating and yeah there was not that much big of a range there to choose from i wish i had not watched those movies screwed up a lot for me the idea of romance the idea of everything i'm so glad at least we're having this conversation and the next generation we can tell them please stop stop watching that i'd also like to see different body types just i don't know i would like people not to be so incredibly thin on tv all the time i think mainstream media uh, film tv is doing better and i think um you know having things like netflix and uh you know youtube you know people can m make content and and distribute content a lot easier and so it definitely is getting better more people of color you see more uh, mixed race people uh, that you know but that's something you don't see very often um, and you're seeing more and more which is good it's definitely a step in the right direction but uh, i don't turn on the tv and see myself i mean growing up you always you looked for whoever looked kind of like you you know so if the heroine had brown hair then you know i saw myself as as her but uh you know you it's dangerous because you can't imagine yourself doing great things if you don't see people like you doing great things um so you know it's about time we get a female president um <laughs> yeah and uh, uh yeah